wait, 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 wait. We're not going to Disney. We're going grocery shopping. Undercover style. So here's the deal. You're here with Rebecca, Albert, Tatiana, and Brian. We're going to be visiting four local grocery stores, two in South Africa and two in the United States. And even more, we're going to do it without our cell phones. Well, with our phones to capture the experience, but it'll be different. It will be mindful shopping, and we'll be soaking in every detail to report back to you. So what are we looking for? Easy. We're looking for marketing in action. Primarily, the four P's of marketing. The four P's are product, what's for sale and how does it look? Price, how much does it cost? Placement, where and how is it located in the store? Is it appealing to customers? And promotion, how are you advertising the product? What are the featured goods? We found that there was some similarity between some of these categories, but these are the four main areas that we're going to be checking out today. So what we learned, aside from some nifty covert filming techniques, is that grocery stores have some similar principles they tend to follow, regardless of where they're located. But each store has some unique quirks. It wasn't always what we expected. But enough talking, let's go shopping. Product mix and selection appears to be fairly consistent, and we found no dramatic differences between countries or stores. But for some reason, stores sometimes seem to hide their products. In the U.S., we noticed one store with freezer aisles that felt somewhat empty and abandoned. That is, until we walked down the aisles and the freezer cases lit up. This energy savings technique might appeal to some consumers, but we think the store missed an opportunity to welcome their customers to the freezer section and spotlight their products. Also, as customers, we expect stores to have products in stock. We're going grocery shopping for a reason, and no one wants to have to duplicate a trip due to lack of inventory. At one store in South Africa, certain products were fully sold out and the display shelves felt somewhat empty. Hmm, no chicken for you tonight. Now, here's something that surprised us with its stark contrast. Different regions have different expectations about sales and coupons. In the US, it felt like almost every product was on a special sale. Regular prices were posted, but wait, look at all these tags. You'd have to look hard to find something that was regular price. But in South Africa, we didn't see sale tags. While this might be a norm, retailers in regions where price discounting isn't as common might miss out on impulse purchases because something isn't perceived to be a bargain. See? Buy one, get one breakfast cereal. This American couple knows a bargain when they see one. There are even differences in how pricing is displayed to consumers. Here in South Africa, we see the meat department. But where's the price? And what kind of meat is this? Check out the packaging a bit closer. Beef, pork, and prices. This makes the customers have to engage with the product up close. We know from marketing that traditional grocery store layout recommends flowers, produce, and other appealing and fragrant items to be placed near the entry to lure customers deeper into the store. Look, this store even has flowers outside. But there are regional variances. Many Florida stores locate these items in the back, most likely due to environmental concerns. No one wants the humidity and heat to spoil their fresh fruits and veggies. Our Florida store has moved its pharmacy up front to compete with CVS, possibly due to high demand for medications and convenience for the state's elderly population. Florida also differed in its placement of prepared foods. Nearby, we found other quick serve products, unique in our team's experience. 
All four stores were the same in their display of baked goods and made us reminisce about home baked treats around the kitchen table. Mmm, can't you just taste the cookies? Finally, once we got deeper into the stores, we noticed that store navigation also varied. We saw that Florida had poor signage, whereas Boston went so far as to have a store map and to hyper-localize the shopping experience by using local street names for the aisles. Wow, all of these stores were maximizing their use of end caps. Some stores even intentionally broke up long aisles to create two shorter aisles, doubling their end cap area. We saw that the U.S. primarily uses these features for promotions and sales, whereas South Africa displayed an assortment of regular goods among some select promotions. Some do a great job with store promotions, whereas others use insider promotions where you may need to be a shopper to understand things, like the birthday promotion. To clarify, these are not birthday party items that you'd want to buy, but rather they're items to celebrate the store's anniversary. And then, for some reason, some stores choose to promote their inadequacies. So, what did we see through these four different grocery store tours? Some things are the same, while some stores account for national or regional differences. Some stores are supply chain constrained, while others are bursting at the seams with products and promotions. Some may feel designed with the customer in mind, while some may be operating under an element of poor management. No matter where you choose to go grocery shopping, you're bound to see some of these principles of marketing in action. Thanks for shopping with us and see you next time. Please remain seated until the boat comes to a complete stop at the dock and you are asked to disembark. Thank you. Por favor, permanezca sentado hasta que el